Welcome to section 1.1, Functions, algebraically, numerically, graphically, and verbally, which are the four ways we're going to be looking at functions in this course. Let's look at a question from section 1.1. I chose question number 5 to show how we will examine functions from each of these four perspectives. So here's the problem. It's a mortgage payment problem. People who buy houses usually get a loan to pay for most of the house and pay on the resulting mortgage each month. Suppose you get a $50,000 loan and pay it back at $550.34 per month with an annual interest rate of 12% per year. That's 1% per month. Your balance, B dollars, after N monthly payments is given by the algebraic equation given here. You can see it. So let's look at the question itself. What are we being asked to do with this information? First, they ask us to make a table of our balances at the end of each 12 months for the first 10 years of the mortgage. To save time, use the table feature of your grapher to do this. Now, first of all, we could put in n equals 1 and get a value, and n equals 12, and n equals 24, which would take a long time. So we're going to take advantage of their hint and use our calculator. First thing we need to do is get this equation into our calculator. So I'll go to y equals and plug in 50,000 times 1.01 1 .01 raised to the x. And move over and close off the information. Plus, now I need a fraction, so I'm going to go into my fraction template, alpha f1, and choose that first fraction template, $550.34, move down to the denominator, divided by our monthly interest rate, times this expression, 1 minus 1.01 1 .01 raised to the x, and close it off. Do a quick double check to make sure we've input the equation correctly. To make our table, we'll use the table feature as was suggested. So I'll go into my table, second graph, and here we can see that at zero months I have $50,000 as my loan balance. Now I'm asked to look at every 12 months so I can scroll down to 12 here. 10, 11, 12, and here I have $49,362 as my loan balance. And then I could scroll down to 24 and 36, but that could take a while. So let's see if we can speed up the process a little bit. I will go to the table set option, which is second window. And I'll start it back at zero again, but then I'm going to jump with this delta table every 12 months because that's what I'm being asked to do in the question. Now, if I go back to my table, I can see quickly what my loan balance is, and if I need to go down to the first 10 years, that's when x equals 120. And there it is. So now I have all 11 values, actually, for my table, because I would start with 0 and work my way up through the 10 yearly balances. And so there we have our solution to question 1a, or 5a. Now, the next thing we're asked is how many months will it take to pay off the entire mortgage? Show how you get your answer. All right, well, let's continue to use the table here, and we can scroll down until we see when our loan balance goes from positive, here at $200.88, to negative. So we know that sometime between the 240th month and the 252nd month, we've paid off our mortgage. To find a more specific value, I'm going to go back into the table set. And I'm not going to start at 180. I'm going to start at 240, because that's when we were still positive. And instead of going every 12 months now, I'm going to go every month to figure out just when we drop. Now, if I look, go back to the table, I can see that between 240 and 241, we've changed from positive to negative. So 
that 241st month, we will have paid off the entire $50,000 loan plus the interest. Now, the next thing we're asked to do is to plot the graph as a function of the monthly, the number of the month uh, until the mortgage is paid off. All right, well, let's look at the graph. We'll just hit the graph button. And, hmm, not much there. Why not? Well, the information we're looking for doesn't, if I look at my window dimensions, there's not much information when our window goes from negative 10 months to 10 months and from negative $10 to $10. So let's think about what a good window would be. We know that our loan values, or our loan is finally paid off after 240 months. So I'm going to go from negative 10 to 250. I like to put in white space around the information that I should be gaining from my graph. And instead of having 250 tick marks across the screen, I'm going to jump every 25 or so. I think that would should at least give me some tick marks that I can work with. Now, the y minimum and y maximum. The y, minim the y variable uh, gives us our, us our loan balance. So I know I start with $50,000 and eventually drop to zero. So that's quite a range of values. I, again, I'm going to want some white space. And since it should be proportional, I'm going to use uh, negative 10,000. Or let's go negative 5,000. And go up to 60,000, because I know that my loan balance, again, starts at 50,000. And hit Enter. So now, if I look at my graph, you can see that we start up there at 50,000 and eventually drop down to zero. Pull that over. There's our graph. The next question we're asked to address is to decide whether this statement is true or false. After half the payments have been made, half the original balance remains to be paid. Show that your conclusion agrees with your graph from the previous question, part C. All right, well, there are several ways we could actually d answer this question. The first would be to go back to our calculator and go back to our table. Now, it takes us 241 months, so if I wanted to look at what was going on halfway through the payment process, that would be 120 months. So I'll put that in, go back and look at my table, and see how much of a balance I have at 120 months. $38,420, which is more than half. So if we wanted to answer that question using the table, we would say that this statement is false because more than half the original balance remains to be paid. A second way to answer this question would be to draw a line at half the balance. So I go back to y equals, and in y2, I'm going to put in a line at $25,000. and go to my graph and we'll see that at that point in time uh, we hit that 25,000 where those two lines cross. To find what month that is I'm going to use the intersect feature of the calculator second trace. Option 5 here is the intersect choice. The way this works is the calculator needs to know where approximately on the screen the intersection occurs. So they start by asking you to determine a point to the left of the intersection on one curve. So you want to get close, but it doesn't have to be all that close on the screen. And hit enter. 
and then it'll jump to the other curve, and on this curve you want to be to the right of the intersection you're interested in. And I'll hit enter again. And then it will ask you for a guess. Somewhere between those two boundaries for the computer to start its search process. Here, I usually just hit enter again, and calculator finds an intersection when x equals 179 and a half, y equals 25,000. So we actually don't pay off half our loan until 180 months into the process. The third way to answer this question is to find out straight off the graph what the value is of our loan when we are halfway through the payment process, which is when x equals 120. Here, we just go directly to the trace option, and we can plug in a value for x, the 120 months, which is halfway through the payment process. When we hit enter, it finds on the curve that y equals $38,419.85, which corresponds with the $38,420 in our table, rounded. So we've answered that question three different ways. You might want to think about which way you might use if you were asked to answer this type of question on a quiz or a test. Which way would be the fastest or easiest for you to get the information? Okay, last question. Give the domain and range of this function and explain why the domain contains only integers. All right, well, let's look at our function again. Here's the graph. Let's clear off the rest of this information. We see it goes from this high point, and we're looking at it until we pay off our low point. So going horizontally, talking about our input values, that covers from month 0 up to month 241. So we would say our domain would be from 0 to 241. But we'd also want to be a little more specific and explain why the domain contains only integers. Well, we determine our loan balance after every payment, and our payments occur once per month. So we wouldn't have a loan balance calculation one and a half months or one and two-third months into the process. So we would say our domain is a set of integers such that n is between 0 and 241. The range would be the possible values we would pull out of this expression. In other words, our loan balance. And our loan balance, we know, goes from a high of 50,000 to 0. So our range would be loan values between 0 and 50,000. Okay.